Okay, in the last class, class we have studied engineering materials, and their properties, and uh, metallography. And today we are going to talk about uh, temperature measurement based on engineering metallurgy. That means uh, it is an essential part of engineering metallurgy that you need to measure temperature at different uh, <coughs> level of materials. Uh, let's say room temperature to the very high temperature up to evaporation. So for measuring temperature, there are many different devices or principles available uh, to measure the temperature properly, accurately, and uh, <coughs> and those we are going to study uh, how those uh, those apparatus work as well as how these things can work, uh, the working principle of those uh, measurement techniques. <coughs> So today we are going to cover uh, metal expansion thermometer, liquid expansion, gas vapor pressure thermometers, resistance thermometer, thermoelectric pyrometer, radiation pyrometer, and optical pyrometer. This uh, all all these things has different application. And basically, the first uh, first three uh, measurements are very conventional: the metal expansion, liquid expansion, gas vapor expan uh, pressure thermometers. And the other other ones from four to seven, uh, these fours are <coughs> kind of advanced technology and gets accurate, uh, accurate result. Excuse me. Before going to the uh, final presentation, uh, that is going to the description of those. Uh, <coughs> temperature measuring devices we need to uh, talk about the temp uh, calibration first because the calibration is the most important thing in in the case of uh, measuring the temperature or any other 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 parameters you want to measure or pressure or uh, <coughs> stress strain whatever you want to measure uh, the calibration is, um, is a very important thing and to study the calibration it is nothing but uh, a graph actually uh, a graph of plot for reference temperature and thermometer reading okay and uh, for calibration like for example uh, if you want to calibrate a uh, thermometer then uh, you need to have a reference Let, let's say you need to know uh, you need to uh, uh, keep it in the known known temperature uh, that uh, the thermometer that you are uh, you want to calibrate you need to keep it in the known temper known temperature and take the reading of that temp, uh, that th thermometer. For example, you uh, you have been given a, a thermometer where uh, you have been, you have uh, asked that uh, you have been asked that the the thermometer has to be calibrated, and that th thermometer uh, you have a another thermometer which gives you accurate result. And let's say there is a pot uh, with water in in there. Uh, can you hear me clearly? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Because there is so much back, background noise at my home. You know, so many kids in at home. Uh, <clears throat> if you have any problem, let me know, okay? Okay, sir. So we have a temperature bath. Uh, we can uh, change the temperature of this bath, uh, let's say, by heating. Uh, from the bottom, we can change the temperature of this bath, and we uh, we have a thermometer in here, and we have a thermo another thermometer in here, and this thermometer uh, gives us uh, the accurate result. Okay. Uh, this known known temperature will be uh, will come from here. Okay, and this one we need to calibrate. Okay, and to do the calibration. Uh, you need to, uh, let's say the first temperature of this uh, bath is 20 degree, okay, 20 degrees Celsius is the first temperature. So this, uh, the no, known thermometer, which is, uh, which gives the accurate result will give you the exact 20 degrees Celsius temperature reading, but the temperature, uh, the thermometer that, uh, that needs to be calibrated, it might not give you the exact result, okay. So uh, this thermometer might give you like 21, let's say. It is, it is giving you 21 and the reference thermometer is giving you 20 exact 20 
when you raise the temperature to 35, let's say 35 degree, this one might give you like 33. 33 degree. Okay. Then again, if you raise it to uh, 70 degree, the temperature of the bath has been raised to 70 degree, then it, it might give you like 72 degree. Okay, there might be variation. Okay, uh, and these are the uh, things you need to do uh, do the calibration because this uh, this thermometer is giving you the exact result and this thermometer is giving also the exact result but it has not been calibrated if you want to measure the temperature uh, of unknown unknown temperatures using this thermometer uh, this thermometer then you need to calibrate it to uh, make use of this uh, of these results and that is why the reference temperature, or that means this thermometer will be in the vertical axis and that thermometer, the thermometer that we want to calibrate will be on the uh, horizontal axis, okay? And then if we plot those points, okay? The 20 uh, reference temperature is 20 and that one is 21, we will get a point and then you'll get another point, you'll get another point, okay? For various points, you'll get uh, a, Carp fitting. You need to do the carp fitting. Like if if it it uh, if the data points look like the linear, uh, then you need to do the carp fitting the linear carp. Then you know the equation of linear equation from starting from zero. That means this uh, this uh, is zero and this is also this also shows zero. That means reference temperature uh, reference thermometer also shows zero, and it shows zero. But the problem is on the higher temperatures. In that case. You need to uh, do the linear curve fitting, and in that case, T is the actual temperature of that bath, and M is the slope of that linear linear uh, regression, and X is the reading of this uh, the thermometer that we want to calibrate. Okay, so in that case, once we know these things, that means that T equals to actually when you do the linear regression analysis, that means when you get the slope of this linear of this linear curve, then uh, the m will be known. Okay. Once the m is known, then the uh, equation will be like t equals to, let's say, uh, m zero point nine x. Okay. Then you can use this thermometer to measure the unknown temperatures. You put the thermometer in unknown unknown uh, unknown heating bath. And then you take the reading, let's say the reading is 70. Okay. Then this 70 is not the correct reading. Okay. So if you want to get the correct reading, then you need to uh, use this 70 as X. You need to multiply by 0.9 with that 70 to show the exact temperature. Okay. And this one actually goes for uh, the, uh, the device that are faulty. You want to calibrate those things, uh, those devices, uh, with the with a uh, really good good thermometer. Then you can use this one. Okay. So far, do you have any question? Sir, I have a question. Okay. Sir, why do we need to use the faulty thermometer if we can use the exact thermometer? Yes, that's a good question. In the industry, you have a lot of thermometers and you use them frequently, right? Those thermometers or yes, thermocouples are used for a long time. And after a certain time, those does not work properly. In yes. that case, you need to do the calibration. If you are working in an industry and you see a thermometer has been calibrated like say, four years or five years uh, earlier, Yes. And if you want to use that to measure the exact temperature, you really need to think about calibration. Okay. Yes, sir. Otherwise, it, it might give you the wrong result. That's why they need to have the periodic calibration of each and every equipment. Yes, sir. Even sometimes in in the uh, in in the developed developed countries, they also calibrate the uh, they also check the uh, what do you say the multiplets. The multiplex also have some kind of tag which says that it has been checked on, on this date. That means after three years, it needs, needs to be checked again. Okay. Yes, so that's why you need the calibration. Not only for temperature measuring devices, but also 
pressure measuring or various kind of sensors okay yes sir okay any other question and in this course actually we have uh, uh, another application for this calibration okay I, i'll i'll go to that uh, once we study the other parameters okay? uh, the uh, the temperature measuring devices then you will you'll understand that and the nonlinear curve that i am showing in here the curve it will not always be the linear okay Yes, sir. Curve will not be always linear. Then sometimes it can be the points can be here, 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 here. Then you need to do the non-linear fitting. In that case, you might want to use like second degree curve or uh, logarithmic curve or uh, or like this. Okay, it might not intersect uh, into into the uh, into the zero zero zero. Sometimes like. Uh, for example, if you uh, the, actually the temperature is zero on the good one, but on the on the, the bad one it might be like uh, five degree or minus five degree. Okay, then in that case the uh, the carb will not intersect in 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 in, in the zero. Okay, yes. so it, it it might change, and also for the linear one, uh, it, it, it's not necessary that it will be uh, always intersecting at at origin. Uh, there might be a constant coming uh, as c okay mc over uh, mx over c uh, plus c the c will be another constant in that case if 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 it is not zero zero yes sir okay so for the first one the metal expansion thermometers it's a very uh, uh, widely used uh, in the case of for example rice cookers or geysers or something like those where two metal strips are attached together as you have already studied in your uh, solid mechanics uh, for uh, the thermal expansion do you remember there was a thermal expansion coefficient alpha the yes, thermal sir. thermal stress chapter yes sir every metal when the temperature is increased the metal uh, actually expands and that is uh, uh, we are using the the expansion okay we are using that expansion to measure the temperature that means it's kind of reverse if you raise the temperature uh, then uh, the metal will expand and how how uh, how much expansion occurs will determine the how much temperature has been changed okay so uh, how how does it work the metal might expand linearly right if you get uh, if if you have a bar for example like this uh, if you raise the temperature of that bar it, it it will expand linearly okay or it might also ex expand on the sideways okay but that will not, uh, that, that will be very difficult because the expansion is very small okay a very small expansion and that will not give us the exact uh, the temperature measurement will not be uh, very convenient uh, using those expansion okay so that is why uh, uh, the two different material when sandwiched together like this okay the thermostat how the thermostat works it's similar to that two different met metal is sandwiched together and di two different metal has different coefficient of expansion for example the on the left side the white uh, white one it, it it has the low coefficient of expansion than the right one right one has high coefficient of expansion and for same temperature change for example at uh, 20 degree at 20 degree there is no expansion the both metals are same okay no dimensional change on that metal when when you increase the temperature at uh, let's say uh, 70 degree 70 degree celsius uh, then the expansion on the left side left one let's say uh, one millimeter the left one has expanded one millimeter but the right one has expanded 1.6 millimeter or 1.8 uh, let's say whatever you say 1.8 millimeter then what will happen the whole system will bend okay and that this bending the how much deflection is occurring that means how much bend is occurring uh, will determine how much temperature has been changed that means from 20 to 70 with the change of temperature from 20 to 70 degrees celsius 
uh, the expansion on the outer side uh, on, on this strip is higher than that one and that is that is causing uh, the whole system to bend like initially it was straight and now it has been bent like this so there is a certain angle of bend or you can also consider the uh, the bend angle or displacement of of the tip displacement of the tip this can be the parameters which uh, can be used as as a uh, for uh, for uh, recording the temperature uh, difference how much temperature uh, how much deflection occurs for what temperature change okay that's how the metal expansion thermometer works and to be more specific this is the general principle this principle actually being used for uh, temperature measurement but actually what happens is that we uh, the engineers actually engineered that uh, the a biometallic strip has been made like a spiral okay when the temperature increases at, at when it's cold then they are cl very close together okay the pitch of that strip uh, the spiral strip the pitch is very low okay, okay. that is uh, the gap between the strips is very uh, there is no gap at a low temperature let's say at the beginning okay at the beginning beginning of the uh, reading there is no uh, no gap between the uh, between the strips but when you increase the temperature of the the strips the strips the outer strip get expanded okay and uh, and uh, an inner speed uh, inner inner strip does not get much ex expansion and that is why the distance uh, the spiral actually the dimension of the spiral increases okay the initially it was like here and finally it was here and due to the increase of temperature the spiral actually expands and that due to that expansion actually this uh, this indicator rotates from from the beginning to the point where uh, we want to uh, uh, to to a certain point actually okay if, if i say uh, more anonymously you know, and due to the expansion of this strip the rotation of this indicator occurs okay and 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 that rotation will actually give us the temperature or how much temperature has been changed in this region okay and how do uh, how do we know that uh, how how do we place some indicators like we, we use that this indicator if you want to use this indicator then let's say uh, we can say this one is 0 this one is 5 degree this one is 10 degree this one is 15 degree okay so how do we plot these things how, how do we print this this scale and to do that you need to have a let's say a temperature bath where the temperature is let's say zero degree okay the temperature of this bath is zero degree you have a known thermometer which is showing you zero degree and you need to put this thermometer in here and you need to see whether this indicator is at zero if the indicator is at zero then you can print here zero and you increase the temperature to five degree five degrees celsius and see where the indicator goes if the indicator moves to this point then you print it five okay that's how this calibration works have i been able to understand you explain everything do you have any question so far sir please explain the last portion the last portion <coughs> the last portion is about uh, it, uh, what i am talking about is that is like uh, if you want to manufacture a metal expansion thermometer how do we do that firstly you need to make the strips okay overlapping strips with two different material okay so that the expansion is different so at initially they will be at uh, when the temperature is very low then they will be close together and when the temperature increases the due to the different coefficient of, coefficient of expansion of the strips uh, it will expand and when it expands then the spiral also rotates and due to that rotation the indicator rotates okay and and why the indicator rotates indicator rotates because of the change of temperature so we can use this uh, rotation to measure the temperature of that uh, of certain location unknown temperatures okay 
and, and, and how do uh, we know the rotations? Rotation will start from here and then rotation will uh, end, for, end at here. Okay. Within this range, how much temperature is changing? We need to determine that. And according to that, we need to print the scale to uh, display the temperature. And to do that, uh, first we need to know, have a known uh, thermometer which will give us the exact, exact reading. Okay. When, uh, and, and a temperature bath where the, uh, we need to put this thermometer in the temperature bath. Once we, we keep the temperature of this bath at zero degree Celsius, and we ensure that this thermometer is giving us zero degree Celsius temperature. Okay, and because this thermometer is, is, the, is the reference thermometer for us. If it is giving the zero degree Celsius temperature and this indicator, the play, position of the indicator should also be at zero degree. Okay, so we print that po position as zero degree. Okay, and then we raise the temperature of this uh, bath to let's say 15 degree by looking at this thermometer, when the temperature is 15 degree, this thermometer also should show the temperature of 15 degree. Then, so the indicator will be at a place and it will stop at a certain place. Okay, and that place uh, will mark that place as 15 degree. Okay, like this. And then uh, we, we complete this uh, for the whole range, range or uh, whole range is, uh, that is showing in, in this indicator. And once we do that, that printing, okay, then we can use this one to measure the unknown temperature. For example, we have a bath, we don't know the temperature, what is the temperature of that bath. We put this thermometer in that bath, and then we see, see the reading, whether it is 12 or 10 or five, any reading between zero to let's say, let's say 20 degrees Celsius, we can measure any temperature between zero to 20 degrees Celsius using this thermometer. We don't need that reference thermometer here. Okay, that's how we do the calibration in here. Okay, do you have any question? No, sir. All right. Sir, I'm at a question, sir. Ha, bolo. Sir, I'm not a thermometer, I'm not a cheap leak, this is a rotary cocono limiter by the jar from Bokina. যে আমাদের মেইন থার্মোমিটার মানে যেটাকে আমরা স্ট্যান্ডার্ড ধরে নিছি সেটাই যখন দেখা যাচ্ছে হাইয়েস্ট টেম্পারেচার কোন সময় এমন হওয়া সম্ভব কিনা যে আমাদের নতুনটার ওই হাইয়েস্ট টেম্পারেচার ক্রস করতেছে হ্যাঁ এটা হতে পারে এখন তুমি তোমার হচ্ছে যে মেটাল মেটাল এক্সপ্যানশন থার্মোমিটারের টেম্পারেচার রেঞ্জ হতে পারে যে 0 টু 500 ডিগ্রি এন্ড তুমি যেটা স্ট্যান্ডার্ডের সাথে কম্পেয়ার করতেছো সেই স্ট্যান্ডার্ডের রেঞ্জ হতে পারে 0 টু 200 দ্য লিমিট ক্যান বি डिफरेंट in that case, the calibration will be up to 200. No, sir, ulta uh, chinda kutsi je. Amar calibration jeta korte si, sheita hoto sir limitation limitation ta bechi. Tamar sir uta hoto 200 parbe. Amar standard ta parbe hoto sir 500. 500. Thale ita ita kya dekha the indicator ta tamar maximum position ekhi stop hoye jabe. Ach sir. Then na? Then stop. Stop. Then if the indicator is at the maximum position. Then you need to stop, otherwise you will damage the damage the thing, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay, Oishi, please raise your hand. Oishi, are you here? Okay. Uh, so for the metal expansion thermometers, like we use the material like invert low coefficient of expansion and for high coefficient of expansion, you can use yellow brass, uh, low temperature, temperature uh, nickel alloys for high temperature. Temperature range can be like minus 100 to 1000 degree Fahrenheit. Most importantly, this kind of thermometer does not require much maintenance and the speed of response is slow. Okay, so one of the disadvantages of this kind of thermometer because uh, the temperature needs to be uh, in the equilibrium condition and then it will show you the exact result. So it, uh, the response is not very quick, okay? And well-known fact is a liquid expansion thermometer where we use the mercury, okay? Uh, liquid expansion thermometer also works the same way as we have described on the, uh, on the metal expansion thermometer. In this case, as you already know that at low temperature, the uh, mercury actually stays on the bulb. And then when we raise the temperature, 
the marker volume of the mercury expands and that gives us the uh, uh, temperature reading okay and the question is how do we know that if let's say uh, the, at 0 degree celsius mercury is staying at this point and at 100 degree celsius mercury is uh, at some temperature okay the mercury is staying at that point and how do we say that this is 100 degree Uh, just give me a second. I have an important call. Hello. Uh, sorry, I had a call from the department. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So the, the this also works in the similar way. You need to when at the beginning when you, you you print this little lines on the on the thermometer like this one is ninety. How do you know this one is ninety? How do, how did they get this one is ninety? Sir, so calibration. They have done the calibration, right? They have other source of measuring the temperature. And that using that source, they checked like for five degree five degree temperature increase. How much mercury? How much how much the travel occurs for the mercury? How much expansion occurs on the mercury? And then they mark that point as like thirty degree, forty degree, fifty degree, like five degree interval or twenty degree interval. Okay, that's how they do that. That that's the importance of calibration. Okay. Okay. Do you have any question here? Okay, so for the alcohol, the temperature range is different for different kind of uh, liquid that you use for liquid expansion thermometers. Next one is the gas or vapor, uh, vapor pressure thermometer. Okay, in this case, this also works in the same way. Expansion, expansion is uh, related to the movement of a of a uh, object or of an indicator. Okay, the expansion of gases. Indicator. We we uh, relate the expansion of gas to the movement of a of a uh, cursor, and then we calibrate the cursor with the known temperatures. Okay, and then we get the we can mark this uh, these points like zero, five, ten, fifteen, whatever uh, range we use. Okay, so this has the temperature range between minus 20 to 800 degree Fahrenheit and liquids that can be used like methyl chloride, ethyl, ethyl, ethyl alcohol, toluene. At, at, at certain, when the temperature changes, this material partially evaporates and that evaporation causes this spiral to expand. When this spiral expands, then this cursor actually moves. When they reduce the temperature, the cursor moves other way. And when they increase the temperature, cursor moves in the forward direction, okay? 
that's how this uh, uh, gas or vapor pressure thermometer works. Okay, any question? All right, the next one is resistance thermometer. For the resistance thermometer, uh, we use the change of resistance due to the change of temperature. Okay, when the temperature of this region changes, the resistance in here also changes. And we use that change of resistance, we calibrate that change of resistance with the known temperatures, and then we can use this th resistance thermometer to measure the temperature of unknown, 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 uh, unknown temperatures, okay? Then how does it work? Uh, it works in such a way that when the, uh, you, you put this one in an unknown temperature, then what actually happens is that the voltage between these two terminal changes, okay? The voltage between these two terminal changes. Let's say at zero degree Celsius temperature, at zero degree Celsius temperature, the voltage we get uh, zero, zero volt. And at two degree Celsius, the voltage we get five volt. Okay. And at three degree, we get 10 volt output. Okay. With the increase of temperature, we get the, the uh, sorry, not the voltage actually, the resistance changes. We measure the resistance, so it will be ohm. Okay, so uh, it will be ohm. That means uh, when uh, at zero degree, the resistance is zero. Uh, the, at uh, two degree resistance is five. At three degree resistance is 10. Okay, that's how then we can, we can uh, use the calibration curve. Okay, like for zero, uh, using the known temperatures in this way, two, three, uh, four, five, six known temperatures. And then we can put the, resistance in this direction, resistance R in this direction, then we'll get some points. And using those points, we can uh, do the regression analysis to get the curve fitting. If the curve is linear, then we'll get like uh, the actual temperature of the of, of a body will be equals to uh, a constant. That means constant will be the slope of this curve, that is M and uh, the reading of the uh, re resistance, resistance hot uh, reading that we are getting from the uh, from these two terminals, okay, and that is the R. That means with the change of resistance, the temperature changes, and M is the constant that we are getting from the calibration curve. And uh, if you want to display that uh, the value, if you want to uh, say that using this temp uh, this resistance thermometer, you want to uh, measure the unknown temperatures, then you will get the reading on the resist, uh, resistance reading and use that resistance reading to in this equation and then you say the temperature of that of, of the body okay the similar way the you need to uh, have a changing medium which medium is changing because of the temperature okay the temperature is changing due to, uh, due to the change of temperature some medium has to be changed what is that medium in the case of the thermo, uh, metal expansion thermometer the medium is expansion of metal. In the case of liquid expansion, the medium is expansion of liquid. And in the case of vapor pressure, the medium is expansion of vapor pressure, increase of vapor pressure. Okay. And in the case of resistance thermometer, the medium which is changing because of the temperature is the resistance. Then we calibrate the change of resistance, how much uh, uh, change in the resistance occur due to the uh, how much change of the temperature. And once we do the calibration, then we can use this res change of resistance values uh, to, to say the how much temperature has been changed or how much, how much is the temperature of that of certain place. Okay, did you understand? Yes, sir. Okay, yes, sir. only one person or two person is responding, but is there any other person available here? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. There are 80 yes, percent. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, okay, you should respond. Okay, the, don't just listen. If, if you have any question, you can ask. Okay, we have plenty of time. All right, so the next one is thermoelectric pyrometer. Okay. 
the the construction of thermoelectric pyrometer this this one is also for measuring the temperature uh, it gives also more accurate results uh, in terms of uh, the measuring temperature okay and in this case we all, we need to use uh, a certain device that will have uh, two different uh, material okay two different wires this one is a kind of wire and this one is another kind of wire two different wire has to be twisted together at the hot junction the point where these two uh, these two wire is connected together uh, and twisted that place is called uh, hot junction and it has to be insulated uh, using the ceramic insulators uh, that the wire, both wire should be insulated should not come uh, come uh, touch each other in any other point okay and those wire has been connected with the compensating leads to a cold junction where they are again connected okay and there is an indicator which actually changes when the temperature of this hot junction changes and uh, emf will be developed a voltage difference will be developed between these two wire which is which we call the thermoelectric effect okay due to the thermoelectric effect the, the temperature of this point is very small and the temperature of this point is high due to the difference of the temperature and due to the different material and because of the different material uh, there will be a voltage generated between these two terminal and due to that uh, voltage this read, uh, you will get a voltage reading on this indicator okay there are two different uh, situation one situation is the material two different material is connected to, in two different re regions and the temperature of that two region is different okay the, because of these two condition uh, the thermoelectric uh, uh, effect comes into play and because of that thermoelectric effect a voltage is generated between these two terminals and that voltage will be displayed in here you raise the temperature the voltage increases you, you uh, decrease the temperature the voltage will decrease okay so what is the changing medium in this ca case what is change changing due to the change of temperature voltage voltage yes so voltage is the changing medium so if we can calibrate that voltage like for 5 degree increase in temperature for 0 degree voltage is 0 for 5 degree voltage is 2 uh, for uh, 10 degree voltage is 4 then we can calibrate it then we can we can say that if the voltage is 5 volt then the temperature would be that if the voltage is 10 volt the temperature would be another one okay so that's how this uh, thermoelectric pyrometer works and it can measure up to the temperature like 3000 degree fahrenheit okay and the the thermoelectric effect is is a combination of two different effects one is a pelsier effect and another one is uh, thomson effect okay and and the, and the, uh, for the pelsier effect if two dissimilar metallic wire two, two different types of uh, different uh, composition of the metallic wire are brought into electrical contact that means they are they, are, they if you keep them in contact an emf will exist across the point of contact okay the duta uh, two different dissimilar material when connected together at two different points and there there will be an emf generated because the electron flow is different because metals are connected with the uh, uh, with the with the electron bond okay uh, because of that electron bond and electron cloud on the material uh, electron actually flows uh, differently for different material and that is why uh, an emf is generated between those two metallic wires and uh, that effect is called the pelsier effect okay if two dissimilar material metallic wire is connected brought into electrical contact then an emf will be generated that means a voltage will be generated and that is called pelsier effect okay the magnitude of emf will be will depend on the chemical composition of the wires and the temperature of the junction point if the temperature of the junction point is uh, same then also there will be emf but that will be very small because of the compositional difference between those two wires and uh, if the temperature is changed between those two terminals then the more emf will be generated okay the effect will be more prominent prominent and another one is the thomson effect if there is a temperature difference between the ends of a homogeneous single wire it is saying that 
if there is a temperature difference between two end of an wire, then there will be an EMF. A voltage will, will be will generate between the ends of the wire. That is called Thomson effect. Okay. And the combination of this Felsier effect and Thomson effect is uh, called thermoelectric effect. Okay, together. So, how many EMFs will be generated? Okay, total EMFs will be four EMFs. That means two different wires will create two different EMFs. And uh, due to the temperature difference between a single wire, there will be an EMF. And since there is two different wire, so there will be another two EMFs. The combination of uh, two Peltier EMFs and two th uh, Thomson EMFs is uh, called thermoelectric effect and the voltage uh, suitable calibration of uh, an exact relation between this EMF or voltage and, temper and temperature can be obtained using calibration method and, and, the, and we can measure the unknown temperatures using thermoelectric pyrometer. Okay, do you have any question here? Sir, sir, prothik bar to sir, our temperature raise kore sir, yeah, prothik measurement yeah, measurement korte si. So temperature the fall down kore ta holo sir ki hobe? Yep, definitely. There will be the change will be uh, change will be reversed, right? And every uh, every material has the limitation. Like if uh, for the metal expansion thermometers, if you decrease the temperature, the volume will be reduced, right? Sir. And for the liquid expansion, if you decrease the temperature from room temperature then the volume will be reduced and you need to use that effect the reduction amount of volume uh, which uh, how much volume is reducing okay yes sir okay the, you, you just need to need to monitor the changing medium due to the temperature change whether it can be higher temperature it can be less than my, uh, less than 0 degree celsius temperature okay whatever the temperature is you need to monitor the changing medium how much change is, change is occurring in the changing medium. All right? This is booster, sir. Okay. Anyone else? All right. So the next one is the radiation pyrometer. We use the radiation. Okay. The change of radiation is the changing medium here. Okay. And using the change of radiation, we can measure the temperature of a body. How do we do that? It involves a radiating source or black body. Okay. And the radiation parameters are calibrated to indicate black body or true temperature. Actually, these uh, parameters, the radiation parameters actually indicates the black body temperature. Okay. And which is not actually exact temperature of that body because there is no pure black body exists. Does it? Does it? Do you know any any of? Do you know any black body? No sir. Ah, oh, who who said yes? Is there any perfectly black body available? No sir. No. No sir. That's why we use a, another term, which is called emissivity of the material, right? Yes sir. To get the uh, to compare uh, the apparent uh, body and the black body. And for this, uh, according to the Stephen Boltzmann law, uh, the rate of radiant energy from a black body is proportional to the fourth power of its absolute temperature. That we already know, the Stephen, Stephen Boltzmann law. I think you have already studied that on, in, in physics. And the apparent, temp apparent temperature measured from non black body material will be lower than the true temperature due to emissivity of that material. When the radiation comes from a black body, and you use the radiation pyrometer, then you will get the exact uh, exact amount of energy that is coming out of the black body. But if the black body is not the actual black body, then you will get the less uh, apparent temperature of that uh, of that body will be less than the actual black body. And that in that case, you need to use the emissivity of the material. Okay, and the Stephen Boltzmann Boltzmann is saying that the amount of energy. W that we are getting out of a black body is equals to the a constant and t to the uh, t absolute temperature of that black body to the power four. Okay, and that is giving us if we uh, use that radiant energy to measure the temperature of that surface uh, of, of the radiant surface, 
uh, then we'll get the temperature of the uh, as as a black body temperature. But that not that's not the actual temperature of that body. Ca is not the actual temperature of that body because that body is not not a black body. Then how do we get the the actual temperature of that body? To get the actual temperature of that body, we need to use emissivity of that material. If we know the emissivity of that material, which is a constant, then we can use that the Ta that we have found from the uh, black body temperature, use that Ta in here, and then use the emissivity, then that T will give us the actual temperature of that surface. Okay, according to Stephen Boltzmann, uh, Boltzmann law, the radiant total energy W equals to total energy W equals to K Ta to the power 4, where Ta K is a constant and Ta is the is the is the temperature of the if if the body would would be a black body okay then that is the Ta is that that, that temperature and we get another relation where Ta to the power 4 equals to emissivity and T to the power 4 where T is the actual temperature of that body and we use that black body Ta temperature here to uh, using emissivity we get the actual temperature of that uh, of that non black body material and that's how the, this radiation pyrometer works. We, we detect the change of radiant energy and we get the uh, change of radiant energy and we, we calibrate it with the temperature change and then we can get we can measure the temperature with the uh, non-contact temperature measurement system. The radiation pyrometer actually is a non-contact temperature measuring device. Okay. Then how the how does it uh, how, how does it work? That's the main question, right? How do we measure the radiant radiant energy? How much energy is get, getting uh, radiated from a hot object? How how do we measure that? That to use that we also uh, we again here the most uh, interesting thing in in here is that the radiation pyrometer itself uses thermoelectric pyrometer. Did you get that? Radiation, yes, radiation pyrometer is a temperature measuring device and that radiation construction of radiation pyrometer involves use of thermopile and thermopile is a thermoelectric pyrometer okay yes, sometimes we need to use the same devices to measure the same thing okay the thermopile also measures the temperature and also the, the whole system also measures the temperature the only difference is that the radiation pyrometer actually it's a non-contact type and the thermopile it has to be uh, in contact with the heat source okay so, so the hot object is staying in here and the radiation energy is coming from uh, through the lens and some of them is passing through to uh, through the eyepiece to adjust where you want to measure the temperature it, you need to do the focusing and adjusting okay to do that you use your eyepiece to do that or adjusting the position where you want to measure the temperature and the radiant energy that is radiant rays that is coming from that point is a portion of that is reflected and focused on a point where a thermocouple uh, that means a thermoelectric pyrometer is present when the radiant energy concentrates on that thermopile, it generates voltage, okay? And that voltage, we don't measure the energy directly. We, con we are converting that energy into voltage using thermoelectric pyrometer, okay? And that we are measuring that voltage, okay? And we'll calibrate uh, using, the, using that known temperature. We, if you know the temperature of the hot body and then, mm, uh, we, we can we can ch change the temperature of the hot body and we can check that how much voltage is changing because of that uh, change in that temperature okay so it's a it's, it's an indirect process okay two step process first step the we cast the radiation radiant, radiant energy we uh, concentrate it into the thermoelectric pyrometer and we monitor the change of voltage so my question is what is the changing medium in this radiation pyrometer? pyrometer? Can anyone say? Sir, voltage. Changing medium. 
boldness is uh, right, but that is uh, secondary. The primary yes. changing medium is the radiant energy. Yes, sir. Okay. The actual, uh, if you want to say the radiation pyrometer, then the changing medium, the primary changing medium is the radiation energy. And that radiation energy is actually uh, converted into voltage using a thermopile. All right. So if you want to calibrate this radiation pyrometer during manufacturing, then uh, what should we monitor? Should we monitor the radiation energy or should we monitor the voltage with the change of temperature of the hot object? So radiation. Do we monitor the radiation? We don't no, have sir, any, any equipment to monitor the radiation. We have the equipment to monitor the voltage because that radiation is ultimately converting into the into voltage, right? Yes, sir. That is why with the change of temperature of the hot object, we monitor the change of voltage and then we plot them into the into the calibration curve. Okay, to get the temperature where where the temperature will be here and the voltage that we get get out of here will be in the in this in the horizontal axis, then we'll get temperature, actual temperature of the body is equals to MV, M is the slope. Then if you know the voltage, then we can say the temperature is that. Okay, and do you have any question? All right. <laughs> The next one is the optical pyrometer. Uh, in the case of optical pyrometer, uh, all wavelengths are considered and also known as total radiation pyrometer. Okay. And only difference between radiation pyrometer and optical pyrometer is that optical pyrometer considers only single wavelength. Okay. Uh, we, what we have seen in the radiation pyrometer is that all the wavelengths coming out of a hot object is being considered and uh, converted into voltage but in the in the case of uh, optical pyrometer we use a single wavelength or a very narrow band of wavelength there is no single wavelength actually it's a very narrow band if you look at the uh, wavelength bands there there is a huge spectrum okay from that a very narrow band of wavelength is considered uh, for the measuring measurement of the temperature and it uh, uh, most interestingly uh, it, it uses a very simple technique Okay, the brightness of light emission from a body is compared with a standard body. That means the, the light that is being emitted from a body is compared with a standard body. And the, the changing medium here is the, uh, the uh, illumination of the standard body. How much illumination is occurring in the standard body? And compare that, I'll, I'll show you the detail. Okay, that uh, um, only with only words, it's not possible to uh, descri describe this thing. Okay, and a red filter is used for color comparison to compare the colors. A red filter is used, uh, and the red filter only allows wavelength of red radiation. Only red radiation can pass through the through the red filter, and and that red uh, uh, the, the 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 intensity of redness is compared. Uh, to measure the temperature. It's very interesting thing. Okay, uh, this one is also a non-contact type uh, therm optical pyrometer. And once it is, an, uh, if it is a non-contact type, it, it has a uh, temperature measuring range. It, it range is very high. Okay, a lot of temperature can be measured using this uh, <coughs> optical pyrometer. And this one is also called disappearing filament type. Okay, <coughs> look carefully. This is very interesting. Okay. Uh, this is the temperature source where, where the hot body is. The radiation is coming, all the wavelength is coming from this, from this place, okay, from this place on this way through that ob objective lens. And there is an absorption screen. That, uh, that is, there is our absorption screen. The absorption screen, uh, the function of absorption screen, I'll come to that later. Okay, just, uh, just remember that. Let, uh, if I forget, let me, uh, uh, make me remember, okay? Uh, for example, all the radiation wavelength is coming from that uh, that source, and there is another reference temperature lamp. Okay, 
that lamp using a variable resistance you can change the intensity of that lamp okay how much uh, intense it will be how intense it will be will be uh, you can, uh, can be adjusted using the rheostat okay that means variable resistance you look through the eyes and what you will see because of this red filter is that this object you will see only red redness of this object and also you will see the reference temperature lab will all you will also see this one is as red because of the red filter only single wavelength can pass through this red, red filter okay so once the, once the only uh, red uh, red wavelength is passes through that that means the this object and this light can be varied once uh, uh, can you mute who's talking okay so once the light is passing through that and uh, you have another light at the front when will you be able to uh, you won't be able to see the background image let's say you have a red carpet at the back and someone is standing painted same red at the front of that red uh, red red curtain then can you see the see the person who is staying at the front let's say if i want to demonstrate it let's say you have a screen in here which is painted red and a example, um a book okay a book is let's say a book or a certain object is also <laughs> staying at the front and you are staying in here okay you are staying in here and you, you are look, looking at you are looking at, at this body and this body is red and the background is also red can you see this body no sir no sir this body will be eliminated okay yes sir and this is the principle we use in here the temperature source will have redness and this bulb will also have redness but due to the change of uh, resistance you can modify the redness of this bulb but you cannot modify the mo redness of this one okay and by changing the resistance if you adjust the redness of this bulb okay you adjust the redness of this bulb so that it disappears that means it it becomes similar red as the redness of this source then this bulb will, will disappear once this bulb is disappeared then you check the multimeter to record the voltage or to record the resistance in that time when this bulb disappears let's say temperature was 1000 degree 1000 degree celsius temp at 1000 degree celsius temperature the red uh, voltage you got is let's say uh, 5 volt okay at 2000 degree degree you get 10 volt you adjust this one okay and you get 10 volt and then you use the calibration in here so that is why this one is called disappearing filament type that means this filament actually disappears and the uh, radiation passes from this filament through the red filter you can only see redness okay very small uh, wavelength of the spectrum and uh, the radiation that is coming from this source temperature source is also red and you compare the redness of these two once these two it's adjusted this filament will disappear and you record the voltage once you know the voltage you can using the calibration uh, calibration equation you can say the temperature of the body and there is a huge range that you can use and the, uh, and the, uh, about the absorption uh, okay so far you, you have do you have any question in here sir eta ki sorosori light source er samne theke measure kora jabe uh direct from light source means the, the, this light source koren mone koren je amar ekta mane cylinder er moddhe ar ki heat ache oi ta amra baire theke mapte chaichhi eta ki shombhob eta diye ha ha of course of course it is possible 
ওয়েবলেন্থ so the you, you just comparing the redness of this body with the redness of the of the lamp sir jodi body ta red wavelength er kono radiation na kore jodi pura energy ta is it possible any light has the redness whenever there is a radiation it has a spectrum right there is a huge range of spectrum and that spectrum contains the red spectrum yes sir. and somehow if there is no red spectrum then you might have to use another filter like a green filter you might use the green filter yeah but the, there is no such radiation which does not contain the red filter uh, red wavelength okay okay sir okay so any other question sir absorption screen to yep for the absorption screen why we why do we need the absorption screen sometimes if you want to measure a very high temperature all the wavelengths coming from here and the intensity is very high that is harmful to the eye if you want to see that and the redness also you can only uh, uh, the only red filter is used because you can only get the red red redness okay you can only see the red but the radiation or red radiation that is coming out of the body is very intense and because of that very high intensity your eye eyes might get hurt and that is why there is an absorption screen to uh, to increase the range of temperature okay the measurement temperature range for uh, you can measure the very high temperature if you use the absorption screen your eye won't be affected okay that is the purpose of this absorption screen which actually absorbs some part of the radiation now the question will be will there be any effect is there any effect because of the absorption screen is there any change what do you think is there any change because of the partial absorption of the uh, wavelengths because this absorption screen actually absorbs all sort of wavelengths and reduces their intensity okay so there will be no change in terms of uh, the measurement measurements will not be affected by the use of absorption screen okay it's just a protective a protective shield okay um that's why i said like the temperature range is like 1400 to 2400 degree fahrenheit but the limit can be extended up to 10000 degree fahrenheit by using various absorption screen which will protect your eye Okay so that's all for today do you have any question in the next class uh, we'll study the test for mechanical properties and uh, that actually includes uh, the destructive tests and non destructive tests and we'll start with the destructive tests